No, no, no. That's terrible advice. I describe typical anxiety problems to ChatGPT and ask for its advice. And as someone who has treated people with anxiety, studied it for many years and made over 200 videos on the subject, I'm going to give my opinion on its answers. So this is what I asked ChatGPT. I said, I feel anxious all the time. I worry about everything, my health, my job, my family. I've also started having panic attacks. What can I do to stop this constant anxiety? These symptoms are typical of someone with generalized anxiety disorder who may also be developing panic disorder. So let's see what ChatGPT has to say. Firstly, it pointed out that it's not a mental health professional, but can offer me some general suggestions and recommended consulting a mental health professional. So that's a good start. I will give it a thumbs up for that. Then it recommends some relaxation techniques. Breathing exercises can be okay, but if someone is developing panic disorder, getting them to focus on their breathing can be counterproductive. Progressive muscle relaxation exercises are okay and meditation can help, though it can be hard for people to do when they're very anxious. So I'll give this one a, a neutral thumb. Next, it recommended regular exercise. Exercise is good for you in general and getting those endorphins flowing is good for your mental health. But the real benefits that it does not mention is that if you're worrying about your health, getting out and exercising sends a strong message to your anxious mind that you are healthy. But okay, I'll give it a thumbs up for that. Next, healthy diet. Again, it's good for you generally. I have heard a few people say it has helped, but for most people, changing their diet is not going to make much difference to their anxiety. Unless their diet is so bad, they have some serious vitamin deficiencies. But it does say to limit caffeine and alcohol, and that is good advice, because caffeine stimulates the nervous system, and too much alcohol affects your dopamine and serotonin levels, which can make you feel miserable and anxious the next day. So, thumbs up. Mindfulness and meditation. With anxiety, your mind is often worrying about future scenarios. Mindfulness teaches you to bring your mind back to the present. Meditation can help calm your mind, but it does take a lot of practice. If you'd like to learn how to do mindfulness meditation, there's a link above. But it's a thumbs up for meditation. Now, what is this? Keep a journal to track situations or events that trigger your anxiety. Identifying patterns can help you find ways to manage or avoid those triggers. No, 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 that's terrible advice. I indicated to ChatGPT that I was developing panic disorder. This is the worst advice you can give someone with panic disorder. Panic disorder is fueled by avoidance and overplanning. There is so much wrong with this advice, I can't cover it all in a short video. But if you want to understand why you should never encourage avoidance, have a look at my series on panic attacks that I have linked above. So, a big thumbs down for this one. Set realistic goals to prevent becoming overwhelmed. Mm, if you're worrying about big tasks or challenges, for example, in work, then yes, this might help. But often people who suffer generalised anxiety worry about things that may never happen. And it's not going to help the health anxiety or worries about family that I mentioned. So I will give that a neutral. So connecting with others and sharing your feelings is good, but you have to be careful here. I hinted that I had generalised anxiety disorder and maybe a bit of health anxiety. These disorders are fueled by reassurance seeking. So if you're connecting with others just to get reassurance about your health or your latest worry, it actually gives your worry thoughts validity and your brain sends the thoughts more often, causing more anxiety. Check out my generalised anxiety disorder playlist if you want to understand this in more detail. So this is a neutral sum also. No, no, no. Again, this is avoidance, so it can fuel anxiety. The only time I would say this is good advice is if you were over-consuming a certain news topic because you were anxious about it. Let's say you're worried about nuclear war, so you're obsessively watching news related to the Ukraine war, just in case it escalates into World War III. This would be what we call a safe behaviour. Safe behaviours are things we do to protect ourselves from a highly unlikely or a logical perceived threat. But that's not the context ChatGPT gave, so it's a definite thumbs down. And finally, medication. It says in some cases it might be needed. And it's absolutely right that you should discuss the benefits and the side effects 
and it did recommend seeing a therapist first, which I agree with. So I will give this a thumbs up. So despite quite a few thumbs up, overall, I would rate the advice as average because some of the advice was plain bad and it missed some important things like challenging negative thoughts and reducing safety behaviours. Though to be fair, it did recommend therapy, which is where you learn about that sort of thing. So if you're struggling with anxiety, don't ask ChatGPT. Go ask a therapist for help. If you can't afford or access therapy, you can learn all about the principles of CBT for anxiety on my channel. So make sure you subscribe and check out my playlists. Take care now.